so without further ado, I'll let Dr. Domingo take over and teach you about the eyes. Thank you. <coughs> so this presentation is just brief. It's on the uh, chronic dry eye, uh, something you're probably experiencing right now as uh, everyone's put down their caffeine, been staring at a screen, and had to watch everything going on. So chronic dry eye is a co common condition. Uh, it's basically the lubrication in your eyes. And as you blink, you should be developing more uh, lubrication to help nourish and replenish your eye. What are tears made of? Your basal tears, well, uh, you have your basal tears and with every blink, uh, you're basically replenishing <clears throat> the fluid over the cornea. Your tears are a complex mi mixture of fatty oils, water, mucus, and more than 1,500 different proteins. The different layers on your eye on the far left of the screen, you have your lipid layer, uh, the aqueous layer, and the mucin layer. So as far as dry eyes, it's a very multifactorial issue. Uh, most people talk about age, and it's very predominant in the older population. But in reality, what is going on uh, <clears throat> with chronic dry eye, they're finding more about age, uh, gender. Of course, with hormonal changes, women are pr prone to this. Uh, different medications, including your antihistamines, de de decongestants, uh, blood pressure medication, antidepressants can reduce tear production. If you have any medical conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, thyroid. Uh, environmental conditions, of course, if your exposure to smoke, wind, or dry climates increase your tear evaporation. <clears throat> Failure to blink regularly, so a lot of those who have contact lenses and so immune to wearing contact lenses, you don't blink as much. Uh, Long-term use of contact lenses, as I said, refractive eye surgeries such as LASIK can decrease tear production. So chronic dry eye, the global market is about 3.42 billion in 2016. Uh, a lot of people say this number is low. A lot of uh, dry eye, chronic dry, dry eye is underdiagnosed. So that's uh, equivalent to about greater than 5 million Americans over age 50. Little data is available on the preve prevalence of dry eye in the population under 18. This is where it's most commonly underdiagnosed. Case study, you have a 41-year-old male with chronic dry eye, uh, 25 years of contact lens use, so he's basically immune <clears throat> to all the uh, issues of dry or having dry eye. Uh, history of cholestectomy, I'll explain that. Uh, excessive phone and computer use and high caffeine intake. Uh, as far as this person goes, it's actually me. <laughs> and I know Russell Clark can attest to the high caffeine in intake today, so I'm very dehydrated. Uh, I do use my phone and computer a lot for a lot of my work, so being in front of the screen unfortunately dries out my eyes. And I actually had my gallbladder removed, which actually, you know, with the, with the lack of bile salts, decreases the lipid layer in my, my tears. So I, do, I am a candidate for chronic dry eye. And we do have some equipment here if anybody wants to do the procedure or try it out. Uh, as far as doing the eye drops, this is probably the best chance to be comfortable with it just because when you do the procedure, it's the only time it's gonna be warm. After that, you basically refrigerate or freeze it. So what are you doing with the platelet-rich plasma? You're gonna take your, hopefully, Juventix <laughs> PRP kit, spinning it down, withdrawing the platelet-rich plasma, uh, the mix is pretty simple. It's a 20-80 uh, split, 20% PRP, 80% saline. So at, for every one milliliter of PRP, you use four milliliters of saline. <clears throat> one thing I've found, uh, for those that are looking for supplies, your sterile compound pharmacies tend to have these supplies. Uh, as far as the patient usage should go, personal hygiene is going to be in increasingly important to prevent infection. Uh, the bottle should be kept at 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit, so basically in your fridge. Uh, it's good for one week. Uh, all the remaining bottles you would keep in the freezer. So how does PRP work? Uh, with the rich, PRP is rich in platelet, platelets and growth factors, including platelet-derived angiogenesis fa factor, growth factors, epidermal growth factors, and platelet factor 4 basically emulating the physiochemical properties of natural tears. Uh, PRP has shown improvement in ocular surface regeneration, regeneration in ca cases of micropunctate keratitis, 
uh, decrease inflammation, accelerate and stimulate wound healing processes, and may also have a lubricant effect. Uh, recurrent corneal erosions is a disorder of the eyes characterized by the failure of the cornea's outermost layer of epithelial cells to attach to the underlying basement membrane, Bowman's layers. PRP eye drops in the treatment of recurrent corneal erosions. Uh, basically, in 27 cases in the PRP eye drop treatment, seven major occurrences and 10 minor occurrences after usage of the, of the eye drops. <clears throat> in 16 cases with the conventional lubricant, all had major or minor recurrences. Uh, no side effects ever noted. Studies of the PRP eye drops, uh, the, topically four to six times per day for six weeks <laughs> to three months in patients with dry eye, corneal ulcers and ocular surface syndrome, 88.3% of the patients improved. Applied topically on patients suffering from dry eye proved to be very effective in 89% of cases, improving both patients' symptoms and ocular surface disorders. PRP promoted healing of dormant corneal ulcers in a variety of conditions, improving anatomy in most cases and visual function in many of them. And these growth factors and cell adhesion molecules have a major role in uh, wound healing and enhance the physio physiological processes at the site of injury. So recently I found this this week. Uh, it's actually a company in Italy. So typically if I go to the sterile compound pharmacy, I will buy the sterile eyedroppers. I will buy the sterile saline solution and do the mix in my office. Uh, I found this interesting because this product, which I still have to do a little bit of research on, because again, I literally found this out Monday. <laughs> uh, they have their own equipment where you could, <clears throat> using aseptic technique, transfer everything to individual eyedroppers. So if Lance is nice enough to fly me to Italy, to look at the company. Yes, this is based uh, out of Bologna. So just your options for dry eye and recurrent corneal erosions to use the platelet-rich plasma eye drops. Uh, as far as other conditions, we have cataracts, which are clouding of the lens, affecting your vision, usually related to aging, uh, very common in older people. By age 80, more than half of all Americans either have a cataract or have had cataract surgery. So this is now changing over to stem cells. How do cataracts affect vision? Uh, Age-related cataracts in two, will happen in two ways. Clumps of proteins will reduce the sharpness of the image in the retina. <clears throat> or the clear lens slowly changes into a yellowish, brownish color, adding a tint to your vision. Cataracts affect about 24.4 million people in the US. By 2050, the institute expects this number to more than double. So here's your vision on the left with normal vision and with the clouded vision on the right with cataracts. <clears throat> cataracts are more severe in children. The major difficulty with cataracts in children is that children are constantly growing. So they're, as they're changing and developing, it's hard to just replace their cataract as their eye is constantly changing. The other issue we have with them is developmental. With the loss of vision, pa pediatric cases aren't getting the necessary input and developmentally, then now they're having issues. So stem cells with cataracts, similar to lens replacement. So I always like to think of this as a contact lens that you're inserting. Uh, some doctors are working with amniotic uh, tissue, a graft, and it's kind of like a, those stem cells can be like a contact lens that you're now inserting into the cat, where the cataract was. It's starting to regenerate tissue. Uh, participants in this study had full lens regeneration within eight months of treatment. And according to researchers, the stem cell approach has had a dramatically lower rate of complication than traditional lens. Uh, next condition, macular degeneration. Macular degeneration is a degener degenerative condition affecting the central part of the retina. Uh, macula, the macula is a part of the eye that is present inside the inner, inner back layer of the retina, responsible for our detailed vision where the optic nerve transfers all your information. You have your photoreceptors, uh, your, the rods and cones and the macula captures that information and sends it onto the brain. In the case of macular de degeneration, the photoreceptor cells get damaged, cause a loss of vision. As the uh, disease develops with aging, it is often referred to as age-related macular degeneration. So a little bit about the process of macular degeneration. Uh, there are multiple types. The most common types are dry and wet. So with dry macular de degeneration, you are getting yellow deposits, drusen bodies, uh, on the macula. Uh, with wet macular de degeneration, you're getting angio or neovascularization. So more blood vessels that are actually starting to push up on the retina and distort your vision and putting pressure on the optic nerve. 
So there's still a lot of research going on with macular degeneration and stem cells. Uh, it's still in the research phase, uh, but a recent study indicates that stem cell injections might soon be able to slow or even reverse the effects of AM age-related eye degeneration in the early stages of the condition. Uh, more than 15 million, of US, or million U.S. adults are afflicted by age-related macular degeneration. So there's definitely a huge need for this. So following the injection, the researchers noted, noted that healthy cells began migrating towards the retina. They formed a protective layer which held off ongoing degeneration. And that's where the benefit of the uh, stem cells and the injection are. Uh, as far as stem cells, when you're doing the injection, uh, you have the ability to, it's, it stays encapsulated. So it's less likely to migrate. <coughs> for, oops, for macular degeneration, this would be your needle. Uh, I believe they're using amniotic fluid, or am, uh, cord blood. So the more mature, <clears throat> that is, the more differentiated the cells are when they're transplanted, the less likely they are to overgrow. Uh, to generate too many RPA cells, which can lead to scar tissue or migrate away from their intended place in the body. On the other hand, less mature cells have more self renewal properties and possibly more potential to integrate and repair the eyes, rods, and cones. So there's still a lot of debate on this. Uh, it's still in the experimental phase. Last condition, glaucoma. <clears throat> uh, glaucoma is a disease that damages your eye's optic nerve, uh, basically by the increased pressure in the eye. You have two types of glaucoma. Let's see. You have your, and we use a sink analogy for that, you have your wide or open angle glaucoma or the narrow or closed angle glaucoma. <clears throat> so the sink analogy is basically with your blockage in wide or open angle glaucoma, it is just basically a clog. Everything is able to drain, it just happens at a slow rate. Gradually increasing the pressure in the eye, and then eventually with the increased pressure in the eye, distorting the vision. So I had the pressure greater than 21 millimeters of mercury. Open angle glaucoma <clears throat> is, is again the slow clogging, so you have a little bit more response time, and a nice a gradual increase in the pressure of the optic, or the, uh, <clears throat> of the eye. With closed angle glaucoma, the angle is too small, and now you have complete blockage. This creates an abrupt onset of eye pain, redness, blurriness, uh, headaches, nausea, and visual halo halos. So this is a, a more severe condition just because it's just an immediate blockage. The fluid has nowhere to go. Stem cells may have two positive effects for this. In early in the disease, they may protect the retinal ganglion cells from degenerating, providing a neuroprotective effect. Later in the disease, when patients have lost considerable numbers of retinal ganglion cells and optic nerve axions and have thereby lost considerable vision, stem cells may be useful to replace lost ganglion cells and restore the connections from the eye to the brain. Mm -hmm.